Greetings again everyone, Seven Artisans are a lens manufacturer with a track history of making various very low budget optics, often manual focus. Well, today they're trying to break the mold a little by releasing a higher quality autofocus lens for Sony E-mount cameras, the Seven Artisans 50mm f1.8 AF. It's a full frame lens just for Sony's E-mount cameras, although I believe that initially a Nikon Z mount version will also be available in China. Its price will be 228 US dollars, 251 euro, or about 216 pounds here in the UK. I'd like to thank Seven Art Sands for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. We'll be looking at both its strengths and its weaknesses. $228 is just a little bit more money than usual for an autofocus 50mm f1.8, Canon and Sony's low budget equivalents are about $200 each, but Seven Artisans claim is that this thing will actually have better picture quality overall, which shouldn't be too hard to achieve, $200 50mm f1.8 lenses aren't exactly renowned for their excellent image quality at the brightest apertures, even if they offer gorgeous images on a full frame camera. This Seven Art Sands offering is certainly a lot bigger and heavier than usual for a lens of this type, being just over 400 grams, but the metallic build quality is a cut above, feeling lovely and solid. Unfortunately, no weather sealing can be seen here, although we do at least get a metallic lens mount with a USB-C port for future firmware updates. At the side, we also get an auto manual focus switch, as well as an aperture ring. That aperture ring turns smoothly, without clicks, but also a bit heavily. It's not so easy to turn, so I mostly left it in automatic mode, although an aperture ring like this will admittedly be useful for video work. Then comes the metallic focus ring, which also turns very smoothly, but a little less heavily than the aperture ring. The focus motor's response to the focus ring being turned is fine, and as you can see here, the lens suffers from less than usual focus breathing, again useful for video work. The lens's autofocus motor works smoothly, silently, and accurately. In single shot autofocus mode, it's a little slow moving, switch over to the autofocus continuous mode on a Sony camera and it's a bit faster, and I didn't find any problems with subject tracking. The lens's filter thread size is 62mm wide, and it comes with a basic little plastic hood. Overall, for a $230 lens, the build quality is quite adequate, certainly a step above cheaper plastic lenses, although the aperture ring is a bit awkwardly made for stills photography. Ok, well let's look at image quality, and we'll start on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are turned on here. In the middle of the image at f1.8, we see plenty of sharpness and very good contrast, although on contrasting edges, unfortunately we do catch a fair bit of purple fringing. Let's look over in the corners, great news here, corner image quality remains fantastically sharp, if a little dark. Even the purple fringing has gone. This is a way better performance than other 50mm f1.8 lenses at this price point. Stop down to f2.8 and those corners look brighter, and the middle of the image looks absolutely perfect. That purple fringing has cleared up quite nicely. The lens stays this sharp from corner to corner until about f11, although at f16 the effects of diffraction are softening the image again. Still, apart from that purple fringing at f1.8, it's a pretty excellent performance here for the price you're paying. Let's see how well the lens works on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera now. At f1.8, we are still seeing good sharpness and contrast, but that purple fringing is getting a bit much at this point. Not surprising, as this APS-C sensor is more technically demanding than the full frame one. Over in the corners, sharpness remains very good, although again, a little colour fringing is visible. Stop down to f2.8 though, for excellent image quality in the corners, with a little more brightness too. The middle of the image looks good also, but stop down to f4 if you want to see really critical sharpness here. Again, the lens stays this sharp until about f11, where softness from diffraction begins to creep in. 
So it seems like the APS-C camera is a slightly tougher playground, with purple fringing becoming a bigger issue to deal with, and it's hard to deal with purple fringing while editing. Still though, overall, it's a sharper performance than usual for a lens at this price point. Ok, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting. Distortion is pleasingly low here, but vignetting at f1.8 is worryingly high. Even stop down to f2.8 or f4, we still see some darkness in the image corners, so that will definitely need correcting. The lens focuses averagely closely to your subject for a fast 50mm. At f1.8, close-up image quality is noticeably softer, but not terrible. At f2, we see a little more contrast, and at f2.8, excellent sharpness returns. A slightly better performance than average here. Ok, how about work against bright lights? We are definitely catching some flaring here, just an average performance, although in fairness, I've seen other lenses fall apart completely when faced with this stress test. Let's see about coma levels now. The good news here is that coma problems have been well corrected, and we don't really see any particular issues here at all. I've moved my camera a little to take a look for sun stars now, nothing here at f2.8. Stop down to f8 though and they're beginning to emerge, at f11 and f16 they become quite strong. An important question for this lens will be the quality of its bokeh. Traditional double gauze 50mm designs tend to struggle with their out of focus backgrounds, in my opinion anyway, but this 7 Artisans optic renders backgrounds surprisingly softly, and I was really pleased with its images. However, strong specular highlights have the usual cat's eye shape to them in image corners, and with a bit of an onion pattern to their substructure. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.8, we do see false colours in bokeh highlights here, about the usual you'd expect for a lens in this price range. It's still there a little at f2.8 and even a little at f4, although at f5.6 it's finally gone. Overall, well, the 7 Artisans lens is an interesting proposition, and in a lot of ways, they've achieved their aim of assembling a sharper 50mm f1.8 lens than usual, albeit with a few problems relating to colour fringing at brighter apertures. It's not a perfect lens by any means, but I can still quite happily recommend it, because the image quality it offers at this price point makes the lens surprisingly competitive and good value for money. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, I've done a little check and my best guess is that this is the 57th 50mm lens I've ever tested. My gosh, the market really is flooded with them, but heck, they're just so much fun and so useful, aren't they? Special thanks of course to my Patreon supporters as usual, your support has been keeping this channel going sponsorship free for years now, and supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, not to mention early access to a lot of my videos. Check it out in the description below, and ciao for now everyone.